Okay, this is going to be a very quick and maybe well, not so quick, but brief overview of all of the changes that are featured in patch 1.11 to Middleworld Shadow of War released today on 6th of February by Monolith, the developers. First, we've got a few free content updates, no, few, no free story, just some upgrades and uh, very interesting innovations regarding the Nemesis system. In particular, we've got the Tunnel Rat, which means that orc can, orcs can burrow into the ground and summon ghouls. These are the special orcs, as far as I can see in the patch notes, not the normal grunts. <laughs> uh, sniper Shot is a special ability that archers will receive, and they will be able to fire from great distance with pinpoint accuracy. No more missing those deadly shots. Godspeed to those who play on the Gravewalker difficulty. Tremor means that Olo can pound the earth with tremendous force, staggering nearby threats and heavily damaging structures. Really cool to see. I'm really, really interested to see how many of the structures, which structures and buildings and such will be destroyable. And the last highlight for the Nemesis system enhancement is the gift of treasure. Your followers can now bring the uh, gift of a treasure orc, providing even more ways to earn gems or gems and miriam. Not really sure how exactly this is going to play out and how buggy it's going to be. Photo mode has been upgraded, that's the part of the game I don't particularly care about. And we've got the player skins that I mentioned uh, before starting recording of this video. You will be allowed to play in the core game as Altario, just with her skin, if you wish, and that's for free. Training orders update has been mentioned because players can now upgrade their orc followers with training orders while in the garrison. Saving time, literally saving time, this was one of the most frustrating things when you had to deal with your followers. And of course offering more flexibility in deploying your armies. Player stats page is something brand new that I actually haven't seen yet in my own game, but we're going to experience that later in the live stream. New menu for players to track a variety of in-game statistics such as uh, numbers and types of enemies killed, thousands upon thousands of millions and orcs, <laughs> dominations and betrayals, ooh, how many times you have been betrayed, that would be cool, fortresses conquered and defended, uh, gear pieces collected, and we already have statistics for the legendary gear pieces and a lot more. And the last is something that I also showed you a couple of minutes ago before starting the recording of this video. It's the field of view option, which is another way for players to customize the user interface and scale the field of view, which basically will allow you or Talion or you to see much further into the distance as in those uh, far away mountains, you would be able to see more details on them. What's coming with the paid DLC, which by the way is available in two forms, well three actually to be more exact. First, you have to purchase the gold edition of uh, Shadow of War if you haven't purchased it yet. There are links in the video description that will guide you to one of the cheapest sources. And of course these are affiliate links, so I don't want to lie to you. If you purchase through those links, you'll actually be supporting me. Thank you. The last time I checked, the gold edition of the game was available for about 50-ish US dollars or 50 something, uh, 40 something euro, which is at least 30, 40% cheaper than what it was upon launch. The gold edition of the game contains the core game and all of the expansions. We are, uh, we are currently in the third DLC, third pale DLC of four announced, and all these four are included in the gold edition. Gold edition includes also the uh, expansion pass, and that's exactly what allows you to play the four paid DLC. The third option to play this expansion that I'm going to feature later in the live stream is actually to purchase it as a standalone uh, DLC which costs if I'm not mistaken 15 US dollars and probably 15 euros. What you can do if you pay the money play as Altariel for the first time with, and uh, enjoy her unique and new abilities. You will get a chance to go head to head with the newest addition to the ranks of the Nazgul. Hint, hint, you know what happens at the end of uh, Act 3? Second, you will be able to wield Eltaria's dual elven blades and harness the light of Galadriel, which is her main new special ability, to my knowledge, what I've seen from the previews. And then you will be able to encounter memorable new nemesis characters such as, well, a bunch of orcs named here, and you will be able to transition them into the core game and have them as your followers. They will be legendary. Uh, you will be allowed to unlock Eltario as a character skin, and that's by default done. You don't actually have to complete uh, anything. As soon as you uh, upgrade, update the game, 
the DLC today was about 7.7 .7 gigabytes from Steam, and uh, I don't know how big it is on consoles. Additional fixes category includes performance improvements, for multi-GPU machines, if you have uh, SLI configuration, maybe you would benefit from this. I would actually like to skip past the numerous fixes and go to the user interface improvements. Layout and messaging improvements to the inventory screen. We're going to see those, of course, in the game in a moment. Added icons next to the legendary gear, helping players identify the tribe of equipped pieces. Added messaging to highlighting the difference between ammo counts when comparing gear pieces. That's actually useful as well, because I have been misconfused or misinformed in the past. And the last bullet point, the equipped visual is now more noticeable. Eh, okay, that's fine. Scrolling a little bit down, we get a lot of updates and fixes to the Nemesis system. And the most important and probably best that everybody cares and has been asking for is that Talion will now be able to speak again during domination sequences once players have reached Act 3. Because, spoiler alert, the, the, the whole show today will be filled with spoiler alerts anyway. Uh, at the end of Act 3, Talion's become the, one of the Nazgu and he suddenly stops talking or actually doesn't talk as much as before. And then Marksman Orcs will now try to surprise players more often from high vantage points, which is really making good use of all this awesome architecture all over Mordor. <laughs> when Uruk ambush players after calling a Karagor, they will now correctly ride the top amount instead of appearing next week. I do have a couple of silly screenshots with this bug being featured there. Jumping again through numerous uh, fixes and updates, in the balance section, your summon bodyguard mount abilities will now reset their cooldowns when you're starting a quest. You don't need to save your bodyguard and special co-mount abilities, you know, number one and number two on PC. Mm -hmm. And then also, all orcs no longer grab you when dashing over them from behind which is logical. They are dumb orgs. They're supposed to be dumb and they're not supposed to be reacting to you when you climb on them from behind. But I don't know why they say dash, dash over them, you usually dash under them. That's really something we're going to discuss and probably uh, discover later on in the gameplay. This was the quickest possible way. Oh, holy crap. It took me over, over seven, eight minutes already. <laughs> Um, this was the quickest way for me to go over the patch changes. I'm really, really eager to see the new story, and that's what I'm going to do. If you're watching this in the standalone version of the video, there will be a link in the video description and probably here as a YouTube card somewhere uh, showing you where the gameplay actually is and where the new story is featured.